Welcome to the show. Today we have a project I've been wanting to do for a long time and I finally found the perfect opportunity. I was checking out a local surplus store that I hadn't been to before and I happened to come across this used hatchet. It really caught my eye because it kind of has a unique look to it to begin with. I really like the shape of this hatchet head and it looked like a very high quality hatchet. So I bought it for 10 bucks, brought it home and immediately started destroying it. Now the idea here was first of all just to separate the head of the axe or the head of the hatchet from that fiberglass handle. Um, I had nothing in particular against it. It did seem like it was very well built and the handle was a, was a very sturdy handle. I'm guessing that this is something that would last for years and years, probably years of hard use. Honestly, I don't know the brand, but nothing that I'm doing here should be taken in any way as any type of negative comment on the brand or on the quality of this tool. It's just the fiberglass handle isn't really my style and I had a plan to reshape the whole thing and put a new handle on it and really change up the look. What I'm going for in the end is basically I guess you could call it a tomahawk, you might call it a bearded axe or a bearded hatchet. Um, I know that pretty much anything that you put the name Viking on nowadays is kind of in fashion, so you know I could have gone that route and just thrown out the term Viking as some sort of clickbait, but to be honest, I don't think the Vikings ever made anything that looked very much like the, uh, the finished hatchet that you'll see at the end here. But it is in some ways kind of a fantasy build with that concept in mind, that it would be a, a design from an earlier era uh, again, maybe a little bit exaggerated and with a little bit of that fantasy element to it. Uh, but it was a design that I've had in my head for a while and I've been wanting to do a build like this and really, you know, try my hand at creating something like that. So as you can see, the fiberglass handle is actually bonded really, really well with the head of this hatchet. So if you are going to do a project similar to this, I would recommend saving your time and just go straight for the drill to begin with. As you can see, I had much better luck using the drill to drill out the handle and then everything loosened up and came out pretty well. Once I had the handle off and I had the eye cleaned out pretty well, I decided to start crafting the shape that I wanted. Again, I was going for kind of a bearded axe look. And I started with the cutting wheel and the angle grinder. That worked okay, but I realized that I was going to go through a lot of wheels trying to do this and that it was going to be a very slow process because one thing about the grinder is, and I think it's because of those real, real high RPMs and you're just concentrating a lot of energy right into that point of the cut. Uh, I realized that things were going to heat up pretty fast and because I really knew nothing about the steel that this was made from, I wanted to be sure not to heat it up so far uh, that I damaged the, the temper of the steel because I wasn't about to start guessing at a whole new heat treating process for this thing. So I, it was important to me to keep the temperature below, you know, let's say 200 to 300 degrees. I wanted to make sure not to even approach a heat that would potentially damage the temper. And of course, right at the point of the cut, uh, that is probably going to happen, but I knew that for the most part I'd be staying away from the edge itself and that's where the temper was probably most important. But after working on it for a little while and trying a couple of different things, uh, including a grinding disc on the, on the angle grinder, I decided the best way to do this was to take it over to my 8 inch bench grinder and see how that worked at you know removing metal and shaping the hatchet. And that's when I remembered, oh yeah, I don't have an 8 inch bench grinder. In fact, I don't have a bench grinder of any kind. So this is one of those situations where I either had to take a break from what I was doing, drive 15 minutes into town, go to the store, spend a bunch of money, and drive 15 minutes back so I could continue with the project, or I had to use a little DIY magic and risk exposing some of the secret superpowers that YouTube DIYers actually have. And in this case, I decided it was most important to preserve those secrets of the trade, so I ran to the store and bought a bench grinder. Now, for the rest of the process of shaping this axe head, uh, there isn't really a whole lot to say about it. Uh, I would say definitely if you're doing this project, take your time because again, you don't want to heat up that axe head to the point where you may actually you know, do some damage to the existing heat treat. And also take your time and go slow because if you go too fast with something like this, it's real easy to take out more material than you wanted to. And as we all know, it's a lot easier to take more material off than it is to put it back when you've taken too much. So just take your time. As you can see, I did wind up going back to the angle grinder a little bit, and I tried out a few other tools also. You know, really this is the kind of project that if you absolutely had to, you could even do it with hand tools, but it would just take forever. Even using power tools, I'm sure I have well over an hour of work into the actual process of shaping this. This does bring up an interesting point though. Uh, if you have a bandsaw, this would probably be a really good project to use that on. I imagine it would put a lot of wear on a bandsaw blade, 
but if you just traced out the shape that you were going for and then cut right to those lines, you could probably save yourself a lot of time. And of course, the other thing is I'm throwing all kinds of sparks and dust and whatever into the air as I'm doing all of this grinding. So it's very important to wear a good respirator when you're doing this and probably also to work in a fairly well ventilated area. You know, not to say that you wouldn't have to do that with a bandsaw. I mean, you always want to protect your eyes, protect your lungs, but you'd obviously wind up with a lot less of those very small particles that a, that a grinder will throw off. So that's definitely an investment I'm looking into. So once I had the shape cut out, I went to, uh, to a flap sanding disc on the grinder, and I used that to clean things up, both to kind of deburr the edges and also to clean up the, the paint that was on there. I had a couple different ideas for a finish that I'd like to put on. Uh, one thing I've done in the past is to use beeswax and uh, heat up the metal and then apply some beeswax and you'll really get a nice dark finish if you're working with a typical carbon steel. I think this was actually a stainless steel and anyway as I've said before I really didn't want to heat it up too much because I didn't want to risk damaging the temper. So when it came to putting on the finish I decided to just clean it up really good with a fairly high grit uh, flap sanding disc and then basically just retemper the whole axe head. And I did that for a couple of reasons. You know, one, I wanted to see if I could get some nice oxidation color on the surface of it, which actually did work out pretty well. And also because I knew that no matter how careful I was, you know, obviously I was heating certain parts of the metal to higher temperatures than other parts and so on. Uh, so just to be sure that I had a good even temper throughout and I didn't have some, you know, strange internal stresses or whatever, I decided to take the whole axe head up to a good high temperature of about 500 degrees. And to do that, I brought it into the house and used our stove. And I also did a couple cycles of it because this is a really big, thick piece of steel and I wanted to be sure to have a good even temper throughout. Now this actually worked out pretty well. I like the color of it, that oxidation color gave it like a really kind of a polished bronze look. But I will say that my knowledge of metallurgy is pretty limited. It's possible that with this type of steel, and again, I, I'm not sure what it is, although I'm pretty sure it's a stainless steel, it's possible that maybe 500 degrees is a little on the warm side. And I really know very little about heat treating stainless steel. So if one of you has any recommendations or any comments about that, uh, definitely comment below. Uh, you know, what do you know about heat treating stainless steel? Uh, again, I wasn't gonna quench and, and, and do all of that because I knew I didn't have the knowledge to do that. But I really thought for tempering, about the only real damage I would do is that I might soften the steel a little too much. And when it comes to a hatchet or an ax, I'm so used to having to sharpen them anyway because they see a lot of really hard use. So I'm not really concerned about the steel being, um, you know, maybe a little on the soft side. So with the axe head basically done, all I had left to do was to pick out a good handle for this. I decided I would go with a, with a store-bought, clean it up, reshape it a little bit, and kind of see how that worked. I did entertain the thought of, you know, taking a piece of hard wood and shaping it and carving it and sanding it down to size. But I decided that was basically a whole other project, and I may do that someday. In fact, I might actually do it with this particular hatchet, and you'll see why in, uh, in part two of this build. Uh, but, but basically, the, the hatchet handle that I found, although it's a really nice handle, it definitely was not the perfect fit for the eye of this hatchet. So with that, I'm gonna call it quits for part one. I ran into enough problems with the handle that I really do wanna devote another video to that, discussing some of those problems and showing some workarounds that I used. So I'll leave that for part two and then also do a demonstration of actually using the ax so you can kind of see it in action. Well, thanks for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you like the video, throw me a like. And with that, I will say, whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video.